Uh, I guess not much more to say than just hello, everybody, who's listening in on this one. So, yeah, I am effectively sick and tired of what all I have necessarily been seeing going on everywhere in the world in this particular instance, and I figured I'd just sit down and talk about it. I suppose the background in question, if you're wondering, is Elite Dangerous, and I feel that it is accessible mainly because it feels like I'm screaming into the void in this particular instance. Um, <clears throat> well, that being said, there is effectively a lot of insaneness going on in the world today. The major thing that I have been considering to uh, talk about is essentially the madness that has been going on surrounding what I necessarily particularly deem as the terrorist activity that is going on of the Black Lives Matter movement in instance. Now, I'm sure this is probably going to end up being an unpopular opinion, but unfortunately that is effectively where we are today. The thing that does need to be considered is what I have seen this movement attempt to try and do, and why I necessarily disagree with them in this instance. Now, the phrase itself, uh, Black Lives Matter, that particular statement I don't necessarily have anything against. Sure, their lives should matter, same as anybody else's. Uh, the movement in question seems to be putting forward a... Well... I'll be honest, uh, once ran across this particular individual who claimed that Black Lives Matter was fighting for equal justice in that instance. And it was hilarious in this particular mindset because they went on a whole rant about it and about how they could run circles. And I literally demanded of them a few answers to some questions that I have been trying to get an answer to. One of the big questions that I have been looking for an answer to in this particular instance is the question of where is the justice for Daniel Dorn? Now, for those of you who may not be aware of necessarily what happened in that particular thing there, uh, following the death of George Floyd uh, in the city of St. Louis, Missouri, there were riots following that particular death. These are effectively the George Floyd riots, or someone might say that they were Black Lives Matter riots. Um, during these riots, in addition to the protesting, but we're focusing on the riots here because that's where the problem necessarily lies to begin with, is that Daniel Dorn himself, if you are not aware of who he was, was a 77-year-old uh, retired police captain who responded to the burglary alarm of a pawn shop, and I believe the pawn shop was owned by a friend of his, and he went down to go check it out. Where I find issue with Black Lives Matter is they claim that, well, Black Lives Matter. And the big question I have been trying to get an answer to out of the individuals who claim that Black Lives Matter movement is a good and just thing and that it needs to be addressed is, where is the justice for Daniel Dorn? Because he was black. And there is video evidence of him having been shot by these rioters and just left to bleed out on the street well, they ran in and looted the place. What this tells me is that these rioters, who are supported by Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter uh, condones these riots, encourages them, despite the damage uh, done in property, as well as the lives lost, and says, this is well and good. Well, they supported uh, these individuals who s uh, killed a black person. And hardly anyone ever talks about this for the particular reason is because the individuals who were rioting at that night in particular were blacks. So what we have here is 
what is known as effectively black on black crime in this particular instance. And they let it go. Um, you know, Daniel Dorn was apparently, according to all sources, an upstanding citizen, and I can understand in particular instance that he was a police captain, and he was, you know, somebody who looked out after his particular community. And apparently, the price of his life was a used flat screen television. That's how much he was apparently worth to these individuals. So the question I have for anybody out there who believes in uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, where is the justice for Daniel Dorn? Did his life truly matter? And that is the interesting thing that we have uh, come to understand, is that if, uh, if you are not part of this movement, if you do not acknowledge this movement, if you do not support this movement, you are racist and problematic. And also, the interesting thing I like to note here is that they also consider those individuals who may be of the uh, black skin tone, and they will uh, tell them to their face, you ain't a real black person, which, again, I find mind-boggling, so to speak. I mean, how much more black can you get when your skin tone is black? Where, where is the logic in this? And that's the issue I take with a lot of this insanity that's been going on, is where is the logic in this? So, uh... I asked this one individual this and did not get a proper response to that end. They said that uh, because the police had failed to do their job, uh, Daniel Dorn did not get justice on this particular end. Which, to me, again, there is no particular logic or reason in that particular instance. You have... Mm, yeah, I'm kind of doing this unscripted as just sort of a test video thing in this particular instance, so forgive me if I'm taking long pauses in this as well. Uh, lost my train of thought there. Oh, new video. The big question is did the police fail him or were the police prevented from doing their jobs okay in that particular instance the police in question were prevented from doing their jobs they were told to stand down and do nothing and while they were standing down and doing nothing as they were instructed to do This is where Daniel Dorn was necessarily killed. So, looking at it logically, the police were told to effectively stand down and not do their jobs in the slightest of that particular instance. When that happens, who is really to blame in that instance? To me, that would be the city officials who, again, supported these riots. Uh, condoned them, encouraged them, and told the police to stand back and do nothing and allow individuals like Daniel Dorn to be slain. And when I brought this up, they had no response that would uh, satisfy this particular instance. So we have government officials in this particular instance uh, condoning these riots, supporting them, telling them that the individuals taking responsibility for them have done nothing wrong and that their cause is good and just in this particular instance. You get a failure of the government to discharge its duties in that instance. To which I find 
Um, abuse of power. It is believed that there is a problem with systemic racism. Now, that's also something I kind of want to address here in this particular instance, which is insane because I have had this conversation with my own mother, who is a college-educated individual, very smart. Um, we had to sit down and go over the definition of racism because she bought into the whole racism is prejudice plus institutional power. That is not racism. Go, go ahead and break this down a little bit here. Uh, racism itself, as a word, is broken up into two parts. You have the base itself, race, and then you have the suffix, ism. Race itself is fairly well defined pretty easily. It refers to the uh, color of one's skin, more or less, uh, their ethnic uh, origins, so to speak. And we put that down as a color, mainly because it's easier to, as a visual species, it's easier for us to describe something when you have a color. And I believe that's necessarily why we have our ethnicities labeled as such. So, I believe we can agree on the definition of race itself being the color of one's uh, skin tone, or at least their ethnicity in this particular instance. Ethnic origins. Ism. I don't necessarily have a dictionary in front of me in this particular instance, but I do believe that the definition regarding the suffix of ism has to do with prejudice uh, to or against. Somewhere along those lines. So, when you take the word race, which is defined as ethnic origination, and you attach the suffix of ism, which is prejudice against or to, you have racism, racism, combined, the definition of which works out in favor of prejudice against or to people of a certain ethnic origin. And that, air of there go, is the definition of racism. Now, what you have going around is an attempt to redefine racism as prejudice plus institutional power. All right. N at no point in any point of this new definition does it actually address um, the definition of race itself. No point. I'm pretty sure we can all agree on that. So, but what is it exactly if we want to take a look at this particular instance? We have institutional, okay. Yeah, institutional uh, power. What does that necessarily uh, equate to? Personally, I would classify it as elite. It's what it is. Institutional power, institutional elite. Um, you know, just an elite. Someone high up. If this were an... Uh, if it were aristocracy, I would classify it as a lord or lady in that particular instance. Authority, that's necessarily what we're looking for. So, we have um, a class-based definition. Uh, elite or otherwise authority, that, that's where you get uh, institutional power. Yeah, that's probably going to happen every few often. I keep getting scanned while I'm on Elite Dangerous here, so shrug. Uh, so we have that. That's effectively um, authority or elite in and of itself. And then you have prejudice, which prejudice um, we just discussed, ism. 
prejudice against or to. And with that, you get elite prejudice against or to. Um, again, the definition is uh, ism. Elite ism. Now, if we wanted to um, reverse that and say that uh, the person is abusing this power to be prejudiced against a certain individual, that would be more of an ist, elite ist. So the definition of racism is prejudice against an individual due to ethnic origin. However, the definition of prejudice plus institutional power leans more towards the favor of elitism. Elitist. Looking down on somebody for being of a lesser class than you are. Not race, lesser class. Now, if you look down on someone because of a difference of ethnic origin, that's racism. Now, I'm sure you're probably sitting here and thinking, how can't somebody be uh, prejudiced against um, race and seeing them as lower class citizens in this instance and that be racism? Well, yeah, sure, you could. But can you be racist without being in that elite position, that position of authority? Yes, you absolutely can. You can be racist without being a member of the elite class. You can also be a member of the elite class and look down on somebody despite sharing the same ethnic origins. Because you are not looking down on them of their ethnic origins, but more because they are in a lower position of you, that is being elitist. So it's not necessarily cut and dried. You can still probably claim that a person can be elitist and racist at the same time. That is indeed a thing. Um, but you can also say that somebody is racist without them being elitist, or you can also say that somebody is being elitist without being racist. To which end, you can also say that somebody is neither a racist nor elitist. So that's why I don't buy into that whole definition. And we kind of had to sit there and uh, I had to sit there and discuss with my mother about the entire thing in that particular instance. Because we had to, again, redefine and separate out uh, racism back into its old definition. Because again, you can be racist against somebody without holding a position of authority. So that's why I don't buy into it. Now, the big thing about racism in the U.S. and where people um, believe that America still suffers a problem of systemic racism is another question entirely. Do we still have a problem of systemic racism? Well, I for one would say if we do, it is in the eye of the beholder. Because here's the thing. Racism was already legislated out. There was the whole Bill of Rights thing that came as a result of uh, the civil rights movement. So as far as the U.S. is concerned, discrimination on the basis of race, racism, prejudice against uh, or to, 
on the skin color of race, has been dealt with. It is illegal. You cannot do it. Now, I'm sure some people will probably be uh, looking at it and going, well, it still happens. They just tend to codify it as something else, using another excuse for the reason to get rid of people. Sure, you can make that argument. No, seriously, I, I will... I will believe you. I will take that with a grain of salt and say, yes, uh, that can happen. But as far as um, where the whole systemic thing comes in, I believe that the individuals who believe in systemic racism uh, believe that it is still ongoing because it is legal to do so. That is incorrect. It is not legal to discriminate on the basis of skin tone. I would say the same thing of feminism, but I think that's another topic that I can get into in another particular time on that instance. But again, as far as there being institutionally based racism, uh, I would say that's on an individual standpoint at this particular point, if you believe that, uh, that's just an individual thing. Maybe you have suffered a lot from it, as I have suffered in this particular instance. Being looked down upon... Um, And one can draw a correlation if they believe that they've done so. But I think that's what we're getting into is the victim mentality in this particular instance here. Uh, because things necessarily happen to you and you believe that you um, are suffering unjustly because of it, I don't think that's a cause for you to go around claiming that everything, you know, is problematic. And I I personally have had a few instances of that particular thing that's necessarily happened to me. Now, uh, for that particular disclosure, I am of the Caucasian descent. I am white. And I'm sure some uh, people will say, well, you can't have these problems because you're white and therefore you have white privilege. That is a bullshit unto in and of itself. I have had my own problems in the past with uh, individuals. Uh, I've, you know... I've been around the bend a few times. So I've seen some nasty things. And I have also suffered in that particular instance. That's the thing. If you tell me that I have what is essentially white privilege because I don't suffer the same problems uh, as an ethnic minority would, I'm going to look at you like you're fucking crazy. Because you are. If you knew what I had gone through, what I have suffered through personally, you would not be so quick to want my white privilege. And basically, you know, that, that's the argument I'll make. If you tell me I have white privilege, I'm going to tell you, if this is white privilege, I don't want it. You can have that. Take it. For the love of God, please. I don't, I don't want this. Seriously. If my situation is what is considered white privilege. I don't want it. Please, take it. I don't care for it. It's bullshit. Seriously. Have at it. I will gladly hand over whatever it is that uh, it is. And I'm sure some people will say, you know, that it means all your money and all your possessions and valuables. I say, no, 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 no. I worked hard for those things. The money that I have the possessions that I have, I worked for them. I earned them. They have value to me because they represent the effort that I put into being a part of society. 
That's what they represent. That's why they have value, especially to me. And the things that I have that were given to me, I consider that a measure of other people's If somebody has gifted me something, and they've given me something as a gift, to me, that reflects the value they see in me. And, you know, you could, I can probably put it into terms. If you've given, if people have given, you know, what uh, some people would say may be a crappy gift, you might see that as uh, so that person thinks of you as having less value than, you know, what they're worth. But to me. Uh, it's, it's a positive thing being given a gift in that particular instance. They have, uh, taken something of value and they are giving it away. And I suppose that's where this whole, uh, mentality for reparations necessarily comes from. These individuals believe that they are worth more than, um, what they perceive society is telling them that they are worth. So. This is where I also have to kind of scratch my head on that particular instance as well. Because again, most of what I have, um, very little of it was given to me. Freely, uh, the own will. I had to work for a lot of what I have. Uh, what I own, what I pay for, is stuff that was, you know, I earned. And it's insulting to uh, be told that I only have these things because of a privilege. I'm not a nice individual. I, I will say that now. Um, I am not a 100% uh, good and just individual in that particular instance. The one thing that, you know, kind of sets me off in this particular regard is the memory I have of uh, being homeless and unemployed at one point. And... Um, I was at church. It was a church where I would uh, hang out sometimes uh, just to keep myself out of the cold and off the streets for a little bit. And a couple of deacons approached me on this one particular instance. And one of them, um, you know, I, I told them my story and why I was there. One of them was very confrontational, very aggressive, uh, not the nicest individual. The other person in question was a little bit more understanding of my situation. And uh, he wanted to offer me up a job in this particular instance. Well, me being unemployed at the time, I said, well, you know, maybe this is uh, my ticket out of unemployment in this instance. And so we were getting into a uh, sort of quasi-interview about the job that he had, the job he had, and the positions he necessarily had open. And we were kind of getting into this whole discussion about my job history, what my particular skills were in that instance. And, uh, um, well, we didn't get very far. Part of the reason is, is because while I was in the middle of discussing this sort of thing, the other deacon very rudely jumped in, interrupted us, uh, started talking down to me about, you know, my skill set, where I came from, and accused me of stealing to support myself while I was unemployed. I picked up my stuff, thanked the other person and said, unfortunately, um, I cannot accept any particular offer of yours while you are associating with this other individual. Because in that moment, I wanted to throw this other guy out the second story window and finish him off while he was on the ground. It made me that angry to uh, have somebody think so lowly of me 
that I would have to steal in order to support myself. When everything that uh, I was doing was above board, I was on unemployment at the time, I was actively looking for other work, and gift, that's just where it comes from. Having somebody um, come at me like that and believe that I was doing underhanded and illegal things to support myself in a time of crisis hurt my pride in that moment. And that is necessarily where it comes into play about uh, regarding, um, you know, white privilege. Doesn't make any sense. Especially when you're blanket accusing everybody because of a particular race thing. You know, that's, that's effectively accusing people of having white privilege. That is racist into and of itself. You are making the stereotype that all whites have it good. Um, because of our skin color. No, that's not the case. That is not logical. That's bullshit. But trust me, I got plenty of other stories about uh, just like that. So therein is the thing in and to and of itself. We... That's why I can't necessarily, you know, take this whole systemic racism thing seriously. Because if we do have a systemic racism problem, it's against whites. I mean, hell, if it's ram if we're saying rampant, it's against everybody. Everybody's being racist. Especially those who think they need to call all this stuff out. Now, I'm not saying eh, it's bad and... You know, you shouldn't do it when it's blatantly obvious. But to start laying out blanket statements like this, that's a problem. That's a huge problem. So I think in terms of if we really want to look at the issue of race and there being a whole problem of racism in America, we need to stop looking at just the whole uh, blacks being a victim of this. We need to effectively open up and consider that everybody is a victim of this. Whites can't be, ra you know, you can't be racist against white people. That mentality has got to stop. That's not okay. That's racist in two and of itself. Now, are there still problems of, uh, you know, are, are there still it, things where blacks can't necessarily get ahead in life? I mean, uh, uh, I'll be honest. I'll say sure. There might be instances where they have trouble getting ahead in that instance, but I think that necessarily might be a topic for another time. But the big, the, the big thing is that when we talk about racism in America, we need to look at racism against everybody, not just against one race. If you want it to stop, you have to address you have to address it against everyone. You can't just focus on the one. Because that's where you get a lot of uh, the craziness that's necessarily going on. Because I, I can tell you, um, as an individual who focuses a lot on patterns, that's necessarily how I think in, in ways. I see things and look at things in patterns. It is painful to me to actually look at uh, everything that has been going on and try to make sense of it. 
it doesn't work. It's this huge jumbled up mess that is so painful that I have to literally look away. Because otherwise it's just going to drive me insane. So, yeah. I don't know who you are. I don't know who who you think. But maybe uh, if you sat through and kind of listened to this whole thing, you know, you thought what I had to say was worth listening to. If you did, let me know. Uh, but mainly this is just for me to get things off my chest, so to speak, and, well, as the name implies, just scream into the void, because that's really what it feels like I'm doing here. But, into and of itself.